Good evening and welcome. I'm Vishnu Shobh on the program this evening. Hours ahead of the arrival of the Prime Minister in Bastar and Chhattisgarh, Naxalites kidnap at least 200 villagers. So as Mr. Modi went ahead and spoke about development in the area, a frightening kidnap drama was played out. It continues to be played out. On the program this evening, are we losing the battle against Naxals in Chhattisgarh? Every few months, there are reports of civilian and security forces casualties to Naxal terror. At least 200 people remain hostage in that part of Chhattisgarh. Joining us now for the very latest on this situation, my colleague Siddharth Ranjandas. Siddharth, what are you hearing? Uh, does this situation remain the same now? Yes, absolutely, Vishnu. It's almost about 24 hours that these over 200 uh, villagers of uh, uh, Marengi village have been held against their wishes by the Naxalites. I spoke to the local police sources and what they have confirmed was that they have been able to locate the location of uh, where these Naxalites have actually kept this over, uh, these over 200 villagers, which is about uh, 20 kilometers in the hilly forest region, very uh, a, a little bit, a little far off from the village where they were asked to uh, come, uh, come with the Naxalites from. And they say that the terrain is very difficult. It will take about four to five hours to actually reach them. And night, uh, in night, they cannot actually go and actually search for, for them. So that is a challenge. At the moment, uh, what, what they are saying is that the situation con continues to be grim. And they say, the police officials, that such situations are not very uncommon in Chhattisgarh. But this is the first time that it has happened hours before a VVIP visit so, and very so close to the station, just four is kilometers this. away. Was this and from a village which is just because uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, was coming or did this take place because several of these villagers were involved in constructing a bridge, a bridge which was being constructed using government funds. Is it also true that these people were kidnapped because they didn't attend a meeting called by the Naxals? Is that the reason or is there a direct link to the Prime Minister's visit? Well, I spoke to the local police and they have been telling us that this particular village has been anti-Naxal movement for a while and the Naxals actually feared that they may lose their grip on this village. The fear that they had cultivated along the years, that may, may, may not be there uh, any longer and because of that, they actually try to re-inculcate this fear. That is why they've taken this action. Also, it is true that a few villagers from this particular village were actually working as laborers in a nearby bridge construction site against because which, which the Naxalites are against. But certainly, on a larger perspective, you see this incident, the Naxalite Naxalites had actually clearly boycotted the visit of the Prime Minister in the southern part of the Bastar region. They had actually issued posters, even hung effigies of Raman Singh and Narendra Modi. And doing this, just 60 kilometers away from the PM's rally venue certainly uh, gives us a sense that they were trying to actually make their presence felt in this red terror zone area okay. on the so day. One, when one other quick Modi question over here. To announce, uh, do we uh, know of any demands, Siddharth, any demands which these Naxals have made? If not to the government, then to the families of the villagers, what, what is it that they want in exchange for the release of these 200 villagers? Here, the kidnapping scenario is quite different to other parts of the country. Here, there's no demand for the release of the villagers. They're trying to reinculcate the fear, trying to punish the villagers in a way for not attending and boycotting the Naxal movement. So they will be let off in a while or two. But what is the biggest fear of the police right now is that when these people come back, because they may have been threatened by the Naxalites, they may say that they had gone because of their own free will and they will have no alibis against the Naxalites and they'll get yeah. no leads as to who actually kidnapped these people. And they will have no access to actually the culprits in this case so this is what they are saying in most cases like this the police never are able to to get the culprits in that part uh, of Chhattisgarh well joining us now to debate this Aman Sinha spokesperson of the BJP the Rajya Sabha MP of the Congress party Mani Shankar Iyer and Professor G Hargopal he's a human rights activist and also a Naxal mediator thank you very much for joining us let me go across to Aman Sinha first okay we just haven't got Aman Sinha on the line just yet but let me come across to you uh, Mr. Mani Shankar Iyer first at a time when the Prime Minister goes to this particular part of Chhattisgarh, he says development is important. He speaks about steel mines, uh, uh, factories being created over there. A scenario like this takes place between 40 to 60 kilometers away from where he's speaking. Do you believe in a state like Chhattisgarh specifically, we are losing the battle against the threat of Naxals? I think uh, the Prime Minister has completely lost touch with the reality there. 
people there are not looking for development they are looking for participative development they are not looking for steel mills they are looking for drinking water they are looking for the public distribution system they are looking for rural roads they are looking for running their own primary schools they are looking for ensuring that there are public health services that are available now we have a framework for this given in the constitution and embodied in the legislation which is called pesa the provisions of the panchayats extension to scheduled areas act and the raman singh government has been particularly negligent in ensuring the implementation of this act although they have passed the chatisgarh government have passed conformity legislation with respect to this i do not believe that this is this incident should be viewed in isolation the larger issue is that unless and until the tribals are enabled to rule themselves they will continue to regard development as not desirable but disruptive okay. and so long as that is their mood then the naxals can take advantage of that to secure an element of shelter from them and an element of cooperation from them and using that as the base to pressurize others into uh, either keeping their mouths quiet or joining hands with them so in these circumstances unless and until the modi government understands what no previous government seems to have understood that we have to have participative development okay. through panchayati raj in these areas i don't think we're going to find a definitive long term solution aman sina uh, re- react to what manishankar ayer was saying that on the one hand you've got the prime minister over there he's talking about mega projects he's talking about steel uh, steel uh, factories in the, in that particular area he is trying to reach out to the naxals as well because he said leave the gun pick up the plow that was the message of the prime minister but then you've got this entire kidnap saga taking place over there so my question is the same in chatisgarh and i have numbers with me are we losing this battle against naxals no oh, bishnu i could not hear what mr ayer was saying but i am sure he would be you know criticizing the government for some reason or another but uh, the fact of the matter is that this has been a historic visit by the prime minister for the first time in past many years the prime minister of the country has gone to the hotbed of naxal uh, naxal affected areas and uh, you know he has announced several large scale developmental projects i am sure it, this will usher in a new era of But development Aman, there are and 200 peace. people who been and, kidnapped and uh, i think we all need to be Aman, commending the prime minister for there are 200 people who been kidnapped for, it doesn't uh, really matter what and, the prime minister has announced in the context of what has happened yes i'm sure that <clears throat> no no the local administration is all already engaged and seized of that matter and they are talking to uh, the the naxals there and i am sure uh, you know this issue will be resolved quickly and uh, you know uh, sometimes naxals in their desperation in their dejection you know they uh, try to register their presence they you know apply these tactics for stalling developmental projects there was a you know construction of bridge which was in the offing and these laborers were working there and in order to you know stall that construction because naxals know that once the development goes to the moorings goes goes to the root which is the intent of this government then it will be very difficult no, no, for them this, to you know we know this but i'll come back to you in a moment i want to go across favor. to professor hargopal he's a naxal antics, mediator naxals are professor hargopal rapidly losing support yeah. even in the local population Professor Hargopal is that is that something that you've seen on the ground in Chhattisgarh that the Maoists are the Naxals I should say are losing support on the ground because if you look at the numbers the statistics the the the, the death toll in in Chhattisgarh is going it seems to be going up uh, or or remains consistent 2010 343 2011 204 four people dead 2012 109 2013 111 2014 111 and this year 46 dead so far that's civilians and security forces on the ground sir do you believe that that the uh, that the naxals are losing ground in chatisgarh no i think we have to look at the problem slightly in a different way see you know the the entire development model see manishankar ayer was talking about participative development 
but his own party also largely responsible for what has happened because they were in power and uh, prime minister said that maoists or the naxals are the greatest security threat to india but never addressed the basic problem in fact the planning commission appointed a subcommittee and there were very meaningful people and that uh, what happened to that report god alone knows that the government of congress has shelved it but the basic problem is that it is not losing or winning that the entire tribals of dantewada or the chetisgarh and it's not only in uh, dantewada the problem is but look at the map of india chetisgarh jharkhand central bihar gadchiroli orissa andhra west bengal now these are all tribal belts and the entire tribal belt there is an unrest now it's not the in one incident that the prime minister has gone there and therefore villagers have been picked up this is one incident that happened today which needs uh, to be debated but one has to also while debating a problem of this kind has to go to the root of the problem that why the entire tribal belt of india is burning and the development model this mega projects and that the development model i think the poor tribal wants a simple happy life he doesn't want this mega project he doesn't want like a, a metropolitan citizen you know a big uh, this one the tribals are very innocent people they have been living with the nature and they have been living in their own way whether they were happy and happy